Okay, let's continue here, video number three in chapter one. Um, again, the, this will be the last lecture video, and we'll get into demo. We will have some more lecture videos later, but we'll get into demo in the next one. I thought about it as I finished the last video, and I wanted to make sure that you understood SSIS is not just for or about data warehouses. Data warehouses can exist perfectly fine without SSIS. SSIS developers and packages and admins may never work with a data warehouse. Okay? They're not related technically, it's just that they work so well together. So there's going to be a lot of cases in this class where we talk about data warehousing scenarios, but there are just as many, if not more, where we're talking about more granular items, more um, items that might or might not be related to a data warehouse, like sending an email from a package, um, loading data from an Excel spreadsheet, and uh, loading it into a SQL server. Is that related to data warehousing? Could be. Not necessarily, though. Taken by itself, we don't know. Put into a bigger context, it might be, though. So just make sure, I'm going to talk a lot about data warehousing throughout this course, but I wanted to make sure you didn't start to get a little cold feet and start thinking, oh, man, I don't have a data warehouse. This isn't the course for me. Or I'm dealing with a, a data warehouse, and he's telling me this course is not for data warehouses. It, it, you'll be fine. Okay. We're going to talk plenty about all the different scenarios. But, you know, truthfully, not every organization needs a data warehouse. you got a 300 megabyte application. You don't need the overhead of having to have people with specialized skills and special hardware to deal with a data warehouse. And sometimes you're just doing simple things like a, a migration. Maybe you... Your organization has been using Microsoft Access, and you've got this really awesome forms-based Microsoft Access application that everybody's gotten used to using for the past several years. Then you've grown, and now you're starting to feel a little growing pains. The Microsoft Access database is giving you some errors or timeouts or things are taking longer. And recently, your chief technology officer, your CTO, got on this big SharePoint kick. And so now you guys are charged with getting it all out of access and bringing a lot of this into SharePoint. But you can't leave your old data behind. Got to bring it all over. How are you going to do it? Okay, well, SSIS could help. You're migrating. You're going to migrate that old table data into SharePoint. Or you might just be writing a brand new custom ASP.NET application. Awesome. SSIS. Let's go get the data. Let's bring it into SQL Server. That's the kind of stuff we can do. That doesn't have to be related to a data warehouse at all. Okay, now one of the huge terms that you got to know is what ETL means. Fairly simple. You can see extract, transform, and load. I think in the last video I tried to make use of that so that you would be prepared for it when we got here. Remember when we talked about the data quality and we talked about how Oracle uh, had U period S period or USA and SQL Server had U period S period A period and in the data warehouse we wanted to have United States. And so I kept using that phrase over and over again. I'd say you extract from Oracle, you transform from USA to United States and you load it into the data warehouse. Or you extract from SQL Server, you transform U period S period A period into United States and load it into the data warehouse. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Right? A lot of times SSIS is all about data. So you're going to be drawing uh, you know, little diagrams. You'll be doing this on paper at lunchtime or during a meeting or on a whiteboard. And you're going to say, okay, so we got the Oracle database here and you know it's got USA and does that sound like you when I do my impersonation then we've got SQL Server and then we've got the data warehouse so we'll just put DW here and we need to extract from Oracle from SQL Server we need to transform into United States And then we need to load into the data warehouse. Okay. This is what SSIS is made for. It's an ETL tool. It'll hook up to all kinds of different data sources. It can do all kinds of transformations. We're going to have to get a little deeper to cover all of them. But there's a ton of them. 
and then it can load it into all kinds of different data sources as well. It's an ETL tool and it's included with SQL Server at no charge. There are plenty of products out there that you could spend four figures, five figures, six figures for that will do a lot of the same work. This one's included at no charge. So it goes far beyond ETL as well. It's optimized for ETL. It has its roots in the old transfer manager from SQL Server 6.5, which was really, I mean, it's in the name. You were transferring data. Okay. And then it became Data Transformation Services, DTS, in SQL Server 2007.0. And then they kind of changed the name again in SQL 2005 to Integration Services, SQL Server Integration Services. Okay. It's not just for ETL anymore. Okay, we, it is optimized for ETL. A lot of the common scenarios like moving data from one environment to another, they're just, it's almost like using a wizard. It's so easy to drag and drop some of the things into your SSIS uh, package. You know, this is the technical term for what we'll do. But there are lots of other activities that you can perform with SSIS unrelated to ETL or that extend your ETL. And I have just a couple listed here. You can see there are lots of DBA-related activities built into SSIS, backing up databases, uh, checking for consistency errors, uh, if you know what DBCC commands are in SQL Server, um, reorganizing indexes, rebuilding indexes, shrinking databases, lots of um, transferring uh, special objects between databases. Okay, so a lot of DBA. Data mining for your data warehousing scenarios here. Uh, file and folder management, creating folders, deleting folders, um, responding to environment triggers like what happens when the E drive gets full. And when I say environment, I mean like the host environment, the operating system that it's running on, for example. And if you're a .NET person, you can custom code whatever you want in C Sharp or VB and pretty much do almost anything that you really want to. You hook up to Yahoo uh, APIs and you, know, you pass in a location, an address, and you could then geocode or get the geolocation. You could get GPS coordinates. You can do all kinds of stuff as a, a .NET developer. It's just very extensible. Okay. So I think that's really the basics. I think you have enough here to get us started. So I tell you what, let's leave lecture land and let's go to demo land. So I'll see you in the next video.